الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد هبت في الله continuing on in our study of the treaties the methodology of the salaf al-salih and the ummah's uh, need for it meaning need for the methodology of the salaf Shaykh Salih bin Fawzan hafadhallahu ta'ala he mentioned about the explanation he was explaining Surah Al-Fatiha and that the mu'min is always praying for guidance and that with that of course the guidance is what what is the guidance to the haq? It's the guidance to the minhaj and the methodology of the Salaf, salaf al-Sadiq. And he mentioned at the end, of course, in the supplication, where the believer supplicates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance and to be away from the path of those who went astray and those who are misguided. And then, at the end of the supplication is the supplication, the meaning uh, is Amin, the statement Amin. And the Sheikh says, the meaning of Amin is, O oh Allah, answer our call. Thus, this is a tremendous supplication for the person who contemplates and reflects. As we have previously mentioned, the person who traverses the path of those who have been blessed will be tested. He will be confronted with restriction. He will be belittled, called a deviant, and threatened, and thus he needs to be patient. It is for this reason narrations have mentioned that the individual who adheres to his religion during the latter days will be similar to the one holding on to a hot coal. This is because he will be confronted with trials and harms. He will receive harm by way of the people, consequently he must be patient, just as the person who holds a hot coal. This person will not be a bed, uh, this path will not be a bed of roses, as they describe it. Rather, it has many harms and difficulties. This path has harm by way of the people. So you must be patient and firm upon it until you meet your Lord, the Almighty, Azzawajal, while you still are upon it. This must be done in order that you may be saved from the hellfire. You will be saved from deviation in this life and saved from the hellfire in the next life. There is no path to salvation except this path. And there is no salvation except for the one who trans traverses it. So here the Sheikh is, is making it clear or clarifying and emphasizing the point that the minhaj of the Salaf is the minhaj of uh, salvation. It's the minhaj, it's the methodology of the Haq. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to traverse it. Ameen. Then in the next section, the Shaykh uh, began speaking about warning against forsaking the path of the Salaf. So this is a tahdir, this is a warning from going away, away from the minhaj of the Salaf as -Salih. He said, now you find people forsaking the methodology of the Salaf. They present this in newspapers, magazines, and in books. They belittle Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, the true Salafiyun. They belittle and disparage them. They accuse them of being extreme. They accuse them of declaring Muslims to be disbelievers, meaning takfir, etc. Their claims will not harm, rather they will only harm the person who does not have patience and strong commitment. Their claims can possibly, the person who is not strong, their claims can hurt, harm this individual. So here the Shaykh is clarifying that if you're not firm, because you will be attacked. You'll be considered extreme. Many people call uh, Ahlul Sunnah in this time and age Wahhabis. They call them uh, Takfiris sometimes. Or they call them Ahlul Ghulu. And this is, these are, I want to distinguish or discern that this is not in uh, meaning that everyone who is called a Takfiri is from Ahlul Sunnah, Abedin. Or everyone who is called who people claim and, and make the term Wahhabi is from Ahlul Sunnah, la. But the point being is Ahlul Sunnah, those people who are trying to adhere to the uh, Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the way of the Salaf as -Salih, that often they're attacked and given these names. And they're often considered to be extreme because people are uncomfortable with talking about Ahlul Bidah.
and people are uncomfortable with refuting individuals and refuting jama'at and groups. So then he said, there are individuals who say, who are the Salaf? They claim that they are just a group like the other groups. They are merely a party like other parties, and they do not have any distinction. This is what some people say about the Salaf. They claim that the Salaf are only another group and party like the rest of groups and parties. These people actually intend to divert us from the methodology of the Salaf. So there's those people who consider the Salaf just to be a, a group of Muslims like any other group of Muslims and that we can more or less pick and choose that we, there's no necessity uh, to adhere to their menhaj or their methodology. Likewise, in this time, Ahl Sunnah is also, people say, well, you know, Salafis are just a group like the other groups. They're just like the Qanah Muslimin, or they're just like Jamaat Takfir, or they're just like um, uh, Jamaat Jihad, or they're just like uh, Jamaat Tabliq. They're like this group, they're like the Sufis, they're like this group. So, they, uh, people in this time, they consider Ahl Sunnah to be like the other groups, but in fact, Ahl Sunnah is a group. But as the Prophet Sallallahu said, when he was when he mentioned the 73 sects, he said, Kullaha finnar al wahida All of them in the fire except one. And they said, Who are they, Ya Rasulullah? He said, Man kana ala mithu ma kana alayhi wa ashabi al yom. Wa kama qala Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said that they are those who are upon what I'm upon and what my companions are upon today. And so we'll continue on in the next sitting. We ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabi Muhammad.